In our last video, we talked about the arithmetic mean, and for today's video, we will be talking about the geometric mean. My name is Abefe, I am a YouTuber, a content creator, and a full-time tutor, and welcome to my learning space. In the world of statistics, we come across several types of variables and the arithmetic mean should not be the only mean that we are going to be using to work on our dataset. So this now leads us to the concept of the geometric mean. So in the mathematical terms, I'm going to be defining the geometric mean. So the geometric mean is simply the nth root of the product of the variables we have in our data set. So let's assume that we have our three variables. We have variable x1, we have variable x2, and we have variable x3. And we are supposed to get the geometric mean of this variable. So the formula for that is going to be uh, the third root of x1 times x2 times x3. That is the third root of the product of uh, x1 with x2 with x3. Now that backs the question, when do we use uh, the geometric mean? Let's recap a bit. The arithmetic mean is best used whenever we have uh, independent variables and uh, variables that actually change linearly. I'm going to use an example to explain this concept. Let's assume I go into a class and then I ask like five students to tell me the amount of money they spend each day. So student A tells me he spends ten dollars. Student B tells me he spends fifteen dollars. Student C tells me he spends twenty dollars. Student D tells me she spends twenty five dollars. And student E tells me she spends thirty dollars. The amount that student A spends does not affect the amount amounts that students B spent does not affect the amounts that students C spent. So the amounts that each of the students spent in a day does not affect one another. That simply implies that uh, the amount of money in this case of ours is actually an uh, independent variable and whenever we want to get the average of such variables that are independent on each other, the concept of arithmetic mean works the best. But when we have variables that are dependent on each other, variables that are expressed in percentages, variables that are expressed in fractions, and variables that actually change exponentially, then we are going to be using the concept of geometric mean. I'm going to take an example for us. Let's take a look at the population of the country. Let's assume we have a country and the population of this country right now is actually let's say 10 million people. Now the next population census that I'm going to be having is going to be dependent on the value of the population of the people in this country. At the moment so that simply implies that if the birth rates increase around this 10, uh, around this 10 million people rather then we are going to be having a larger number in the next population census and if the death rate uh, increases around this 10 million people rather so that simply implies that we are going to be having less amount of people in the next population census so that simply implies that the value of the population right now actually affects the value of the population in the next 10 years in the next five years so if you want to get the average of such variables that are dependent on each each other then the concept of geometric mean work best we also try to use the concept of geometric mean when we have variables that grows exponentially and a perfect example of that is uh, the compounded interest and this is one of the reason why the uh, the the idea of the geometric mean actually work best in the financial world so that being said it's time for us to move into our worksheet and get some calculations done on how we can get the geometric mean when our data set is in it, in its raw form when we sort our data set based on score and when we sort our data set based on class let's go there so we are supposed to learn uh, how to get the geometric mean of our data set and uh, we have the first question here that says uh, find the geometric mean of the data set so we have two two three four two three if you follow the last video this was the same data set we used to actually get the arithmetic mean so uh, i did that because uh, it will be able to it will be easier for us to you know follow the whole trend so we are supposed to get the geometric mean of this data set and if you notice uh, this data set of ours is actually uh, a data set from any raw form that is it was directly gotten from the population or from the sample so uh, since our data set is given to us in the raw form so the formula for the geometric mean uh, which is GM is actually going to be equals to we have uh, so we have a many data set of ours. so the formula is at uh, the end root of x1 times x2 times x3 times x4 you know till we get to xn so that is the formula for the geometric mean and as we can see right here we have a uh, six data set so that means our n is equals to six so that means uh the geometric mean in this case of ours is actually going to be equals to the sixth roots of the product of two times two times three 
times 4 times 2 times 3. So that means uh, our geometric mean is actually going to be equal to the sixth root of. So let us use our calculator to actually work on what we have inside the sixth root. So we have a uh, 2 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 2 times 3, and that gives us 2. 288 so we have to use our calculator to get uh, the sixth root of 288 so uh, this is six right here and then we have a uh, 288 so the answer from my calculator is going to be a uh, 2.57 so the geometric mean of our data set so two decimal place is 2.57 and it is time for us to get the geometric mean when our data set is grouped based on the score so let's go there so our question says that Billy wants to know how much uh, time on average does his colleague in school spend in the library in a week. So he, too, he took a random survey by asking students how much time they spend reading and got the following data. So we have 2, 3, 2, 4, 3, 3, 7, down to 4. Uh, so the timings were measured in hours. We are supposed to calculate the average geometric time the colleague of Billy spends reading a day. Uh, so taking a look at our data set, we can see that our data set is actually in its raw form, but this data set is quite large. So what Working with this data set in its raw form, it's actually uh, going to be quite tedious and this is where we have to sort our data set. Uh, so I'm going to be sorting this data set based on score and uh, we did the same thing when we are working with the arithmetic mean. So we have to sort our data set. So let's just come here, we draw the horizontal line. So we have this and then for the vertical line, we also draw that, very important. So this is that about that. And then we have our x right here, which represents the variable of interest. In this case of ours, the variable of interest is time, and we have the frequency. So just like we did in the last video, we count the number of time to repeat itself, the number of time three repeat itself, the number of time four repeat itself, uh, down to seven. So uh, if you missed that video, or if you haven't watched that video, I'm going to be linking a video in the top right corner, so you can just check it out. So we have uh, two in our data set. We have three. We have four. We have five, we have six, and we have seven. So from from our data set, rather two occurred three times, three occurred uh, five times. We have four to occur six times. Uh, we have uh, five occurring three times. We have a uh, six occurring one time, and uh, we have seven occurring two times. So we've actually created a frequency table for our data set. So it's time for us to get the formula for the geometric mean when we have our data sets grouped uh, based on score. And the formula is not really that different from the one we used when our data set is actually in its raw format. Uh, so uh, the formula for the geometric mean is going to be equals to the square root. And then instead of having n here, we have summation f right here. And then we have our x1 raised to power f1 uh, times x2 raised to power f2 times x3 raised to power f3 till we get to uh, xn raised to the power of fn. So in this case of ours, our geometric mean is going to be equal to uh, the, the nth root of summation f and uh, summation f in this case of ours is actually the sum of the frequency. So that is going to be 3 plus 5 that gives us 8, 8 plus 6 that gives us 14. 14 plus 3 that gives us 17, 17 plus 1 that gives us 18, plus 2 that gives us 20. So we have the 20th root. So our x1 is 2 and the frequency of the of the variable 2 is 3, so that's 2 raised to the power 3 times uh, we have a uh, 3 raised to the power of 5 uh, times 4 raised to the power of 6 times uh, 5 raised to the power of 3 times 6 raised to the power of 1 times 7 raised to the power of 2. So uh, let's use our calculator. So we have uh, the geometric mean is equals to the 20th root. So we still keep the 20 right here. So I'm going to be slotting all of this into my calculator. So we have 2 raised to the power of 3 times uh, 3 raised to the power of 5 times, uh, excuse me, times uh, 4 raised to the power of 6 times 5 raised to the power of 3 times 6 raised to the power of 1 times 7 raised to the power of 2 and that gives us uh, such a large number and that gives us 2926264322 zero, zero, zero. so when we take the uh, the 20th root of this answer, we have our answer to be uh, 3.74.
so the geometric mean of our data set is actually equals to 3.74 to 2 decimal place so it's time for us to get the geometric mean when our data set is actually grouped based on class so let's go there and here's our question it says that you grew 50 baby carrots using special soil uh, you dig them up and uh, measured their lengths to the nearest millimeters and you group the results so we have lengths uh, we have frequency uh, as you can see this the data set has been grouped based on class because 150 to 154 is a class the same applies to 155 to 159 so we have uh i think like eight classes right here so uh 150 to 154 being the first class and 185 to 189 being the last class so let's just uh actually come back to let's try to extract out this table so uh we are going to be having something of this nature we have the horizontal line and then uh we have the vertical line we have one of this and then we have another of this so we are going to be having two because we'll be needing what we call the middle class so um so we have uh, the uh, variable of interest which is length here so we have this to be x we have this to be the frequency so we have a uh, 150 to 154 we have 155 to 159 and then we have 160 to 164 So, the formula for the geometric mean when our data set is actually grouped based on class is almost like the one we use when our data set is grouped based on uh, on score. Just at this time, we are, not, we are not going to be using the value of the uh, variable directly. We are going to be using what we call the middle class. So, the formula is that the geometric mean is equals to the square root. And then we have a summation f right here. Then we have xm1 f1 times uh, xm2. Uh, f2 till we get to uh, x m n then we have f n so that simply implies that you are going to be getting the middle class and like i said in the previous video uh, the middle class is simply the average of the classes that the average of the lower class and the upper class we have in a class so for the class of 150 to 154 so the middle class is going to be 150 plus 154 uh, divided by 2 and uh, the answer we have right here is going to be 152 excuse me so we have this to be 152 so the same thing applies to 155 plus 159 divided by 2 that gives us 157 and we do the rest like that so it's time to substitute all of this into the formula well we have a quite large number of data sets so we have to be careful so uh, the the geometric mean is equal to so let's sum this frequency first so let's use our calculator to sum the frequency so we have a 5 plus 2 plus 6 plus 8 plus 9 plus 11 plus 6 plus 3 and that gives us 50 okay yeah so that means that we have the 50th root exactly so this is 50 then the middle class is 152 so this is a 152 raised to the power of 5 times uh we have a excuse me let's take that up exactly so we have a 157 raised to the power of 2 times uh, 162 raised to the power of 6 times 167 raised to the power of 8 times 172 raised to the power of 9 times 177 raised to the power of 11 times 182 raised to the power of 6 times 187 raised to the power of 3 we can see that this is going to give us uh, if you try to work on what we have into the inside the 50th root it's going to give us a large number so i'm going to just substitute all of those directly into my calculator and get the final answer and the answer to our question is actually 170.32 so the geometric mean of this data set is going to be equal to 170.32 uh, so if you actually learned something from this video and if you also enjoyed the class i would really appreciate if you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and also like the video you can also turn up your notifications to get an alert or to get notified when i release new video which i do almost like at least three times in a week uh thanks for making it to the end of the video and i really appreciate that we'll see you in the next one bye for now